Hello friends and welcome back to Restaurant Recipe Recreations. This channel is dedicated to teaching you how to create your favorite signature dishes from the most popular restaurants. And with Cinco de Mayo right around the corner, in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to recreate the original fish taco from the San Diego-based restaurant Rubio's Coastal Grill. The origins of the concept of a fish taco, they believe began in about the 1950s, 1960s, and very likely was founded on the coast of Baja, Mexico. But it is widely believed that a man named Ralph Rubio was the first person to bring the fish taco to the United States. Ralph Rubio opened his first restaurant in 1983 in Mission Bay, which is near San Diego, and there at the first Rubio's Coastal Grill, he began selling his famous beer-battered fish taco, which is now known as the original fish taco. Now let me tell you a little bit about what this fish taco is before we get started. The original fish taco at Rubio's Coastal Grill is made with a very mild white fish. I have here Pollock, and that's what they happen to use at the restaurant. If you can't get Pollock, cod will work, but you should try to make sure that you're using a fresh, mild white fish. From there, the fish is beer battered and deep fried. I'm going to be using in this batter a Dos Equis Amber Beer. It's wrapped in a corn tortilla. It's topped with what they call a Rubio's White Sauce, a very, very simple salsa fresca, some shredded green cabbage, and then squeezed with some fresh lime. And I'm going to show you in this episode how to beer batter and fry the fish, how to prepare the Rubio's White Sauce, the very simple salsa fresca, and then if you stick around to the very end of this video, I'm going to show you how to make your very own homemade corn tortilla. Now, you can always buy corn tortilla on the shelf in the store, of course you can. But I will tell you that if you have ever had homemade fresh corn tortilla, it is like a religious experience. You might wanna stick around and watch this because I will say that it is easier than you think. It takes less time than you think, but the difference in taste and texture is incomparable. So let's go ahead and get started with the original fish taco from Rubio's Coastal Grill. But before we do, I would like to ask that if you're enjoying this channel, if you think that it's fun, if you think that it's informative, but most importantly, if I'm bringing you value by teaching you how to recreate your favorite signature dishes from the most popular restaurants, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me if you haven't already. If you like this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up as well. Write a comment in the comment section below and also hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified of all of my upcoming episodes. So before we batter and fry the fish, you wanna make sure that your salsa fresca is ready to go, that your Rubio's white sauce is ready to go, and that your cabbage is shredded. If you stick around to the end of the video and learn how to make your own fresh corn tortilla, you're going to want to do that first as well because once the fish is battered and fried, you wanna make sure that you eat this taco right away. So let's start with the salsa fresca. It's a very simple salsa with only five ingredients in it. I am going to use a food processor to make this salsa fresca because I want the consistency to be like a smooth puree. I have here three large Roma tomato. Go ahead and just cut the Roma tomato into large chunks. One cup of fresh cilantro and feel free to put the stems in there as well. One cup of diced yellow onion. And to bring the heat ever so slightly, we're going to add one half of a fresh jalapeno. Now, if you want to bring up the heat a lot, then add an entire jalapeno. Also, if you were to leave the seeds in, that'll bring the heat up as well. But I'm going to make this a mild salsa so that it doesn't take away from the mild flavor of the fish. So I'm only going to add one half of a jalapeno and I am removing the seeds as well. And now we're just going to add a pinch of sea salt. Stick this in the refrigerator to get nice and chilled because your salsa fresca is finished. And now we're going to move on to the Rubio's white sauce. And this white sauce couldn't be any easier. It's two things. It's mayonnaise and it's whole milk plain yogurt. One cup of each, equal parts. So I've got my one cup of mayonnaise. What kind of mayonnaise? Duke's mayonnaise, only Duke's. You know I'm all about my Duke's. And as I said, one cup of whole milk plain yogurt. And then just stir it until it's well blended and creamy like a crema. And just stick this in the fridge so it stays nice and cold. And then we're going to finely shred the cabbage. So you're not going to use an entire head of the green cabbage. I would say probably about a third of the head. So you want to make sure that this cabbage is shredded very, very thinly, like razor thin. 
The best way to do that is to use a mandolin, of course. Always be very careful when using a mandolin. As you get a little closer to the blade, you'll probably want to use a guard. And you can see that it really is the best way to get your cabbage like paper thin, almost see-through slices. And that's what you want for these fish tacos. But now that everything's ready, we are going to go ahead and batter and fry the fish. So start with one cup of all-purpose flour. Sprinkle about one teaspoon of garlic powder into the flour. Some cracked black pepper. And then you want one cup of a dark Mexican beer. I'm using the Dos Equis Amber, and then gently whisk those ingredients together. Set this off to the side, and then we're going to prepare the fish, and we're going to get the oil ready for frying. Set your wok on high and put enough canola oil in it so that you've got about two inches of oil. Let's blend up this batter one more time and make sure that the pollock is rinsed and perfectly dry. And then you wanna take a little bit of kosher salt and lightly salt the fish. To make sure that your fry oil is hot enough for frying, take a meat thermometer, place it in the center of the oil, and you're looking for between 350 and 375 degrees. If you don't happen to have a meat thermometer and you wanna know if your oil is hot enough, flick a little bit of tap water into the oil. Once you hear that water reacting with the oil and making that sizzling sound, you know that your oil is hot enough for frying. So take two pieces of your pollock, completely coat it into your beer batter. Take each piece of your fish out of the batter, sort of knock off the excess, and drop it into the fry oil. Turn the fish around in the fry oil so that the breading has an opportunity to get brown all the way around. The fish is going to stay in the oil for about four minutes. When the fish has this beautiful brown color, you know that it's ready. Go ahead and set this fish off to the side on your drainage rack. And now we're just going to repeat the process with the rest of our fish. Now that your fish has been fried, give it about a minute on the drainage rack. And then, as I mentioned before, you want to eat these right away. So the last thing to do is we're just gonna put these tacos together. So take one of your gorgeous homemade tortilla, take one piece of the fish, and now you're just going to drizzle the taco with some of that white sauce or crema, and then you're going to top it with the salsa fresca, and then you top it with your julienne green cabbage. Take a wedge of lime, squeeze that over the top, and your original fish taco from Rubio's Coastal Grill is ready to enjoy. One little tip about eating tacos that I learned when I was in Mexico is that you don't bring the taco up and maneuver the taco towards you, so you kind of have to maneuver your head to work around the taco, the taco doesn't work for you. <laughs> and that is the authentic way to eat your original fish taco. But either way, tacos are still messy. I mean, my cabbage is falling all over, so. They always say not to eat ribs or tacos on a first date. And I have to say that I would agree with that. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Happy upcoming Cinco de Mayo. And until I see you all again, everybody, make it an awesome, awesome day. Cheers, I love y'all. Oh God. <laughs> It's dripping out the other end. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there's definitely a joke in there, but I'm just going to leave it alone. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Love you. Okay, let me show you how to make homemade corn tortilla. Like I said, the difference is incomparable in terms of taste and texture. It does not take as long as you think. Once you start making your own corn tortilla, you're never gonna go back to the store-bought. So what I have here is this fun little gadget. It is a cast iron tortilla press that once you put the tortilla in, you press it down, and there you have it. Couldn't be any easier. I bought this, I think, for about $25 or so on Amazon, and I'll put the link below so that you can purchase it on Amazon yourself. And this is the masa that I think brings the best flavor to homemade corn tortilla. You can also purchase a similar masa, which is the masa amarillo, which is a yellow corn flour. Either one will work and the amounts will work just the same. But I'm telling you that in my opinion, the masa tamal is the one that makes the tastiest corn tortilla. And if you're gonna go to the time and the effort of making your own, why not make it the tastiest, right? Okay. So let's get started. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to start with two cups 
of the masa tamal. Next, you're going to add one teaspoon of salt, kosher salt. And then what I have here is a cup and a half of warm water. And you want to start with just about one cup of water, and then you're going to mix the masa, the salt, and the one cup of warm water around until a crumble starts to form. Incrementally add a little bit more water at a time until the dough will form in your hand. All of the masa should be well incorporated, no little dry pieces of the masa anywhere, but also be very careful that you don't make the masa too wet. So let me show you the consistency of this masa. You see how it's not at all too wet. It's very, very thick dough. And then you take your tortilla press, and this is important. You want to line it with a plastic bag so that your tortilla doesn't stick to the cast iron. Take a little bit of your masa dough, roll it to about the size of a golf ball, stick it in the center, cover up the golf ball sized masa with the other half of the plastic bag, press down the cover, pull the handle, and squeeze firmly. Gently remove the plastic, set your tortilla off to the side, and continue your tortilla making process. So the next thing that we need to do for these tortillas is we need to fry them in a dry nonstick pan. So working with one tortilla at a time, you want to, on a medium high heat, let it fry on one side for about one minute, and then flip it over and you're going to fry it for about one minute on each side. And if your tortillas aren't perfect, there's a little chip in the side like there is here, that's okay. It lets everybody know that they're homemade and we're looking for taste and quality over perfection. 